Smith, good morning. How are you, my friend? Good. How are you fellas doing? Oh, man, we're fired up, getting ready for week one against the Detroit Lions. Niners, of course, trying to bounce back from a tough season a year ago. They get Nick Bosa back. You know something about playing high-level football on the defensive line, but let's get let's get back to what everybody was talking about yesterday when it comes to Lions and Niners. A lot of people remember when you guys went up to Detroit and beat the undefeated Detroit Lions. You guys improved to 4-1 and one, uh, after beating Philadelphia, coming back 24-3. But handshake gate with Harbaugh and Jim Swartz. We never, I never heard your perspective on the situation. So let's just start right there. Uh, what was your perception of that situation? Where were you at when all that was going down between Jim Harbaugh and Jim Swartz? Uh, I just kind of really remember the end of the game. I think it ended on a sack. I think me and Ray in, actually ended the game on a sack. Yep. Or maybe it was a player or two before that. And then, uh, you know, we were just kind of pumped. We got a win, and we're, you know, the on to the next one mentality, see who we got next week. And then uh, heard a little shuffle and commotion, and I, I was just giggling. <laughs> giggling. <laughs> Why were you giggling? I, I, just, I just figured he was, uh, you know, he, he wasn't going to take anything snide remark or something like that so i was just i was just kind of laughing at probably what happened then i heard about it and i really laughed justin you are a 49er legend i mean one of the great defensive linemen in 49er history i i think you're one of the great free agent picks up pickups in the last 20 years in the nfl but definitely for the 49ers take me back to when mike nolan was recruiting you and he got you into a helicopter and you guys flew over the bay area because that story is iconic <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he was just kind of, you know, he didn't know how I'd react to the the Bay Area and stuff like that. And my whole thing the whole time, I mean, we were flying around. I was like, man, I I like it out here. I like the West Coast. I just didn't know how I'd fit in the system. And I knew at that point I was at least at the halfway point in my career. And I had never really been on a truly good defense or a truly great team. And that's what I was looking for. That was the piece I was – missing in my football career and I, I saw the roster there i met some of the guys saw the stuff they were doing what they wanted to do and the young talent patrick willis uh manny lawson all those type of guys those caliber athletes i was like man i think we could build something here and uh if i come in with the right mentality and we come in and and we actually say it out loud what we're trying to do we can go from there, and uh, that 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 was my decision maker for me. Yeah, I mean, 2009, you guys had so much promise. I mean, there's just so many young studs. 2010 left so much to be desired. They kind of clean house in terms of the coaching staff, and they bring in uh, Jim Harbaugh. I mean, did did you guys know right away that Harbaugh was going to change the culture? I mean, I know you didn't have any OTAs, and there was Camp Alex going on at that time, but it felt like for the fan base that Philadelphia game, that Detroit Lions game, like it took four or five weeks, and everyone was like oh yeah this is real yeah i mean we had a good team i mean we felt like we had a really good solid defense tough o-line uh all that stuff because i mean you gotta remember we went through camp singletary i mean yeah that's right <laughs> it, i mean we beat the hell out of each other and we really toughened up now we didn't we didn't run the best schemes and that was the problem on offense and things like that but when Harbaugh came in and took a already tough, mentally tough, won't back down team, both sides of the ball, O-line and D-line, secondary receivers, everybody was nasty. Everybody was mean, ready to go, and he actually implemented good schemes, good offense, brought in Vic Fangio, uh, who was the best defense coordinator, hands down, uh, that I know of. And you take those pieces and, and fit it with the scheme, you got something, and uh, we figured out pretty quick, week two, week three, really around that Detroit game that you're talking about, that we, we just right. clicked and we turned and we knew we had something. No doubt. I remember the Philadelphia game that uh. year, down 24 to three. You get the strip <laughs> on Jeremy Macklin. You guys recover the fumble. The sideline goes crazy. They go berserk. Frank Gore seals it with a first down run, and it felt like that was the game. You guys started to believe in the system and Jim Harbaugh. Now, when you look at these current 49ers. Back in 2019, they had a similar game like that against Pittsburgh week three. Do you see any similarities with this current roster of the 49ers with those teams that played on under Jim Harbaugh? Yeah, I mean, you've got to have 
I'm thinking it always starts up front. I mean, you all, you got to have a quarterback. That's true. I mean, the best teams year in, year out have those top quarterbacks. But the next biggest piece, you got to have that O&D line. And I think they're really similar in that regard of they got, they got some players and they got some dudes that are going to demand the best out of other guys. And uh, if you have that, everything else will fall into place. Yeah, so, you, you, you'll, you'll demand the other guys work harder and bring up their game. Justin Smith here on 95.7 A Game with Joe Shasky, the Butcher, and Bonza Hill. 49ers great, an all-pro, a five-time pro bowler, no doubt about that. Um, but don't forget it, too, folks. We're giving away Disneyland tickets right after Justin, Justin Smith uh, gets off the phone lines here. So you will get some Disney tickets coming up here on the morning roast. Justin, Nick Bosa. <sighs> Explain, what do you see when you see number 97 coming around the edge? Oh, well, I mean, that guy's a different player. I mean, he's got such bend in his hips. He's got power. He's got speed. He, I mean, he's just the total package. And, uh, you know, coming off that knee injury, things like that, just tough guy. You can tell that his dad played and his older brother played because he has skills and moves that usually take – five or six years to develop. So he's just a polished guy coming straight in from college and one hell of a player. And he's going to be a catalyst for him up front. He comes back uh, strong and, and, and ripping and running. He, he's going to ra- raise the uh, level of play across that whole defense. And, and they're going to need him. A pro bowler, five consecutive years with the 49ers. Justin Smith, just an absolute stud for us. Go, take me back to that New Orleans Saints playoff game when you literally tackle the tackle Andrew Brees simultaneously. You've been dubbed the strongest man ever by a lot of different linemen. Was that a rare occurrence, though, to tackle both the offensive linemen and Drew Brees simultaneously? <laughs> yeah. As far as I remember, even in practice, I mean, that's the first time I've ever done that. But, I mean, everybody was just so dialed in, so damn excited to get that win, to, to move forward and, and try to win a championship. I mean, everybody, any team I've ever been on that 2011 team, that was the most singular focused, unselfish team I'd ever been a part of. And uh, everybody out there on, on that team was just laying out there every play to get a win, and, and that play was no different. It was just, we're going to do whatever we got to do today to win. Justin, and, uh, I hate to go down this this rabbit hole. Me and Bonte were sick individuals. In my mind, I still envision that Ahmed Bradshaw fumble and Navarro Bowman ripping it out Justin, like he's pulling the guitar string. It drives me insane to this day. That was a fumble. 100% agree. I mean, there's <laughs> a lot of things <laughs> from those uh, three years where we were knocking on the door. Uh, to get some championships that, that just still drive me absolutely insane. What, I, I don't even try to think about them, but I didn't want to bring them up, Justin, because no, you're the cowboy. To. And I'm not. I'm trying to have we you back you. on the airways, and you know, I'm not trying to get my head snapped or anything by you, man. But what is one of those biggest regrets in that three year run? Because you guys brought 49ers football back. Those games against the Giants, the game against the Ravens, the game down in Atlanta, the game in Seattle, those are some of the best football games the Packer of all game. time. So the Packer Tundra game. game. The, all those games. What's the one that, that really sticks to you? Is it all three of those losses, or is it the Seattle game? Which one of those games really just drives you nuts? You know, the, the Giants game probably drives me the most crazy just because I felt like we were such a better team mm-hmm. uh, physically. But uh, Seattle, I mean, that, that rival that started in there, I mean, that, that, that really turned into, like, almost hatred between the teams. So, I mean, it was – those were always matchups, and we, you're going to get the best out of both squads every time uh, we got together because, I mean, just could not – we'd have played those games for free. <laughs> I love it. I want to I want to rat a tat tat some of our favorite players from that era because you played with them and just give us a couple of quick thoughts on each guy. Let's start with Frank Gore. Oh, Frank. Uh, I mean, he's another guy that just brings the level of play up his passion for the game. Uh, I believe he's still playing, isn't he? No, he hasn't signed with a team yet, but he still wants to play. <laughs> we want him to play. <laughs> to play. I mean, just the heart on that guy. I mean, I fell in love with Frank when I first got there. I was like, this dude is a old school football player. Like, why? Well, like to think of myself, and we just bonded immediately. And I mean, if if your best player, Frank Gore, 
is working his tail off every day, that means everybody does. And that, that's what you got to have. See, some of his runs were just incredible. We were watching the Detroit highlights, the Schwartz yeah. backslap game, and he was just running all over the place. And the guy creating holes for him, Joe Staley. Yep, Joe, another great player, tough, smart, athletic. Uh, all those things. And, I mean, just his level of play just kept elevating all through those years as well. Patrick Willis. A mutant. <laughs> <laughs> it created in a lab, huh? <laughs> it created in a lab, man. I mean, in, insanely fast, quick. And he had all those physical attributes that only a couple people on earth ever have. And he was also one of your hardest workers and hardest studiers in the film room. So once again, I mean, I just, all those pieces on those teams made everybody just raise their game. You know, just in the way that era ended oh. for you guys, it ended so abruptly, like three straight NFC championships, the Super Bowl appearance, you guys get so close. Can you speak to how long the windows or how quickly windows close in the NFL? Because I think the current roster right now, a lot of people think they have Super Bowl talent, Super Bowl talent, but there's so many moving parts in the NFL with the salary cap. Can you speak to just how quickly windows close in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, it's something we talked about a lot when we were uh, back in those days. I mean, because you know those windows close and you have to strike while the iron's hot and – Unfortunately, we couldn't get it done. I'm hoping these guys get it done because, uh, man, it's a tough pill to swallow after you really go back looking who the guys you had, uh, the work put into it, the mentality everybody had, all those little pieces come together, all the intangibles come together, and you just didn't quite get it done. It'll drive you crazy. So I'm hoping these guys bring it all together, realize the opportunity they got, and, and push it over the finish line. I mean, I, going back to that 2011 team, I mean, it was like a comet seeing Alden Smith just absolutely destroy teams on third down. Ahmed Brooks, Navarro Bowman's emergence, and then the two hard-hitting thumpers in the back, Deshaun Golson, Dante Whitner. I mean, th that 2011 team, I think it's the greatest defense I've ever seen. What about you? I would agree. I mean, you got you're forgetting guys like Carlos Rogers, yeah, and, and those type. Of, I mean, Dante I'm, Whitner it was on and on. Yeah. Whitner, uh, Deshaun probably had one of the best seasons Golson, I've ever yeah. played by a safety. Uh, so, yeah, man. I mean, it's that that's what makes it so hard to swallow is uh, didn't quite get it done. And the, all having all those guys on the same team, it's, that's hard to do. Yeah. All right, so take me back to, to 2012 because I remember I go to all the games. I'm sitting there. It's the Ram game. There's like a nondescript play with, with Alex Smith. He goes down, out jogs Kaepernick. It ends up being a tie game. It goes to overtime. You tie. Jeff Fisher runs two fake punts. And then the following week, Kaepernick's going to start against the Bears. What was the feeling in the locker room? Did people think he was ready to go? Because we got a lot of quarterback stuff still going on to this day, and everybody points back. Back to Alex and Kaepernick. Should Alex have stayed the quarterback? Was it the right decision? What was the team thinking before that Bears game? Well, I mean, it, it, most people really wouldn't believe it, but it really is that separated offense and defense and special teams. I mean, we were just like, as long as they can score a little bit, we'll be good. So we right. really didn't care. And that's up to the coaches to put in the best player. And that, you let the old linemen and stuff figure and talk about that. We're just taking care of our business on this side of the ball. We're going to get you the ball back, keep the keep the score low. Well, but, yeah, uh, no doubt. You know, that's that's all. That was my mentality. I was like, we, we, we got a lot of our plate over on this side right now. But, uh, right. yeah, I don't know. It's easy to look back. Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Right. So I, I don't know what no. the right decision was. Well, Justin, being on the bench, though, why as you guys are going over series and stuff like that, you look at the – look up at the scoreboard and Kaepernick is breaking off 60 yard runs and he's throwing dimes. What was it like watching him come in kind of like a comet through through the sky? Like he's just, it was like a blur when he came into the game and then those two years with you guys where you guys had a nice run. That was great. I mean, anytime uh, your offense, I don't care who it is, is moving the ball yeah. and scoring some points. That's all you can ask for as a defensive guy. So, I mean, uh, we were, I, at least me, I, and the guys on that defense side, we were so focused on just getting that win, moving to the next week, and trying to, you know, accomplish that mission and get a championship. 
that's all we thought about. I, I really didn't think any farther than that, to be honest with you. And Justin, I hope you get a chance to come back to Levi's and get your just due from the fan base because you were one of the great gladiators this team has ever had, and you, you fought in the trenches for years. You never got the appreciation that you deserved, and it's just I, I was a big-time fan of just the way you conducted yourself and how hard you played for this team. I hope you can get a chance to come back to midfield and have this, this fan base give you the standing ovation that you deserve. Well, I Always uh, try to get back, but, uh, man, it was, it was my honor. Had fun in that history, that team, uh, the friends you make on those teams. Uh, big part of my life, and I loved it out there. Every what, are you, minute. what are you doing now, Justin? What's going on with the Cowboy these days? How's retired life? Uh, it's good. I, uh, boys, busy with that, and uh guy I'm playing some football. And, and <laughs> Shocker. On a farm, so, yeah. Are they linemen? <laughs> I got a little bit of a D lineman tight end combo going on. Oh, I like that. George Kittle 2.0. I yeah, I, I try to tell him, don't worry about catching the ball so much. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do this again, man. You're, you're an all time legend. Niner fans miss you. Well, miss you guys, and uh, best of luck this week. Sounds good. Absolutely. Justice Smith, wow. Ronnie Morning Rose. Take care, Justin. We'll do it again soon as the Niners take on Detroit. A lot to unpack there. But let's